Okay, so this is a video uh, by request specifically on covert narcissism. And there's a lot of confusion around a lot of terms uh, having to do with narcissism, covert narcissism being one of them. This is because these terms like covert and overt and malignant and delusional and somatic and cerebral and flying monkeys and hoovering and dosing and love bombing and all of this, these are not official terms, okay? So your therapist, your mental health professional is probably not gonna be familiar with these terms unless they are um, like deeply familiar with narcissistic abuse, not just what they learned in school or not just what they've been doing kind of like in a regular day-to-day -day practice. It's So these terms, they're not gonna know what you're talking about if you go to them with these kinds of terms. They're not gonna be able to clarify anything with you based on these terms because they're not official terms. So there's a lot of confusion about them and victims are the ones that really probably tend to use these terms most. This is interesting to me, okay? So I, um, my name is Dana <laughs> and I have a background, I have kind of a varied background when it comes to this. So currently I am a psychiatric nurse. I work with people with personality disorders and mental illness. I also worked at a domestic violence shelter where I worked with victims of all kinds of abuse. And generally, their partners who were narcissists, although at the time I didn't know that word, we were not taught that word, we were just taught uh, kind of symptoms of abuse, what abuse looked like, you know, criteria of an abusive person. There was not that word being used, although I think it really should be used because it really helps to clarify a lot of things for, an, for a victim to know that, yes, you are with a narcissist, here's what a narcissist look, looks like, they will not change, they just get worse, medication does not help that would really help a lot of domestic violence victims if they are in fact dealing with a narcissist, which based on my experience, I really think that they are, or an antisocial personality disorder type person. These people tend to be, they're in the same personality disorder cluster, and so they tend to really have a lot of overlap as far as behavior traits. So covert narcissism, um, there, if you go online and you're Googling it, you're probably hearing a lot of different things. Covert narcissism, it's also called uh, vulner the vulnerable narcissist, the shy narcissist. Um, some people think that covert narcissists are um, have really low self-esteem and um, you know they, they're very insecure, whereas the overt narcissist comes across as incredibly secure, they're overly confident, they're kind of your Donald Trumps of the world. They will call people out head on if they suffer some sort of narcissistic injury, they go on the attack. So again, like think Donald Trump, right? And I'm not saying that he's a narcissist, I don't know for sure, but he definitely has a lot of like narcissistic personality traits, right? So for example, I think it was Rosie O'Donnell. He's got this beef with Rosie O'Donnell, right? And she had made some sort of comment about his hair and he went ape and took out all of his TV time, like slamming her and just went on the attack. That guy is a pit bull if you cross him. That's very common for more of the overt narcissists. That's what they do. These are the narcissists that you see coming. They're very grandiose. They have delusions of grandeur. I mean, Donald Trump, everything is named Trump, right? Everything is gold. Everything is over the top. Um, you know, the guy swaps out wives, what, like once they hit 30 or whatever. I mean, he's gone through how many women. He loves to just impregnate models is basically what it is. He has all of these children by all of these different women. And it's, you know, obviously I don't, I really don't think it's because he loves his kids. I think it's just, it's that arrogance of him impregnating all of these gorgeous women. So there's those people that you see coming. Um, to me, in my experience, with covert narcissists, I don't agree with a lot of the definitions that are floating or out around there. I don't think that they're insecure. I don't think that they have a low self-esteem. Um, I think that they have the exact same personality traits as an overt narcissist, but they do, they just go about it in a different way. They hide it better. So they have a huge ego. That's what narcissism is. They do everything, everything they do is to feed their ego. Everything is about power and control. They just go about it in a different way. To me, I view covert narcissists as the um, wolf in sheep's clothing. These narcissists 
tend to come across as they're very much all about other people. They're kind, they're generous, they volunteer, they're active in a church, they're okay playing a seemingly supportive role. If you need a hand, they're there. They, they might seem very humble. Um, both of my narcissists were very much that way, which was why it was so confusing to me. I, I knew that, you know, Jack was my first experience with one. I knew that I had encountered behavior that was way outside the realm of normal behavior, but I didn't know what it was. And that's what brought me to Google and I was trying to make sense of all of it. And I was coming across words like narcissism, but I thought, well, no, he's like the exact opposite of a narcissist. Here's this guy who's really into Eckhart Tolle and getting rid of the ego and being in the now. And we would have these amazing spiritual discussions and he was very giving. He was the best neighbor. I mean, he would plow our neighbor's driveways in the wintertime. He would check in on their dogs. He would make me, he did all of the cooking. He brought me coffee in bed every morning. He was very attentive. He was very giving. So I was confused because I thought, well, he's not a narcissist. Like if anything, he's the opposite of a narcissist. So what does that make him? And the more I, when I stumbled across the word covert narcissist and really began talking to other people about it, and was finding that they were having, that's what exactly what they were noticing. They're like, here's this guy, he's this wonderful person, but I'm seeing flashes of this really behavior that doesn't line up with it, right? Or um, you start realizing that everything about them is a lie. So to me, a covert narcissist is very much about public image. They, take, they go to great lengths to cultivate this world's most amazing person persona. You probably can see this on Facebook. They're the kind of person that plasters how great of a husband they are, how great of a dad they are, but they'll do it in kind of subtle ways, right? So like an overt narcissist might be like, yeah, father of the year award goes to me and I'm such a great dad and look what I did and blah, blah, blah. Whereas a covert narcissist might talk in a more roundabout way. Like, I'm so proud of my son. It's been such a long road, but we did it, kiddo. You know, you graduated from high school and you got this full ride scholarship and then everybody's gonna be like, ah, but you did this. Like, you're the best dad. He's so lucky to have you. Um, do you see how that works? So they're, they, let, they need that ego fed and they get their ego fed by everybody else thinking that they're just this absolutely amazing person. These types of narcissists take a while to uncover because um, they, they can oftentimes come across as a valuable team player in a marriage and in a family or in a friendship or at work. They're not that guy. They're not that overt narcissist who's a ridiculous human being who's almost intolerable to be around. Um, my covert narcissists were incredible listeners. They were both very, very charming. They had everybody snowed. The second narcissist I dated, Steve, everybody loved him. My family loved him, my friends knew him, loved him. Um, my friends and I, we all known him for several years. And he was just really seemingly like the world's greatest guy, was probably the best way. Like this all American, uh, world's greatest kind of guy, just kind of salt of the earth, clean cut. You know, there was no obvious red flags about him when you when you were to first meet him. You have to really get to know him well to know that. And you know, after talking to his wife, he you know he'd upped and left her three times for different women out of the clear blue with no warning. He was um, an alcoholic. He'd had a past with drugs, with cocaine. He'd had gambling debts that were so bad that she was afraid a hitman was going to come after them. He they had gone into bankruptcy. He was involved with all kinds of shady people. Um, a lot of his family was no longer talking to him. He was an absolute pathological liar. Um, you know, so again, a lot of these traits, honestly, to me, again, narcissists, they're very much the same. I, in my opinion, they all lie. They all cheat. Well, the vast majority of them cheat. Um, they steal. The vast majority of them steal. They mooch off others in some way, shape, or form. They do, there's just a lot of this entitlement driven behavior. And, but again, overt narcissists, it's more outward, covert, it's more hidden. Um, I will do another video. Somebody wanted me to do one on covert narcissists as parents. So this is something that I had to really ask around about because my experience has really only been with narcissists. Well, I have a couple family members that I would say are narcissists. Um, 
and I have dated a few, but I don't have a parent that's one. So that's a whole different ball game and that should be, um, well, I'll let you make up your mind what you think about that video. So that's it with covert narcissists. Um, other people, if you're dating one of these people, they're probably gonna be pushing you to work things out with them because they're very, again, they're very charming. They're very convincing. So they're telling other, and they're good listeners, right? And they're telling you everything that you wanna hear. They come across as like your best friend. And I would say that these narcissists too, um, there's that soul, that manufactured soulmate connection. My guess is that's probably more common with more of the covert narcissists because they really do come across as just this diamond in a sea of coal, right? Like they are the most amazing person. And victims oftentimes have a hard time be, uh, wrapping their head around, we had this amazing connection. We had all these things in common. How can you walk away from this? Like, don't you see how rare this is? But the reality is they manufactured all of that. None of that was real. Um, so yes, other people are probably gonna be pushing you into it. It's not uncommon for them to charm a therapist, especially because a lot of therapists, again, this, this like subcategories of narcissism are not in the DSM. So that's the book that they're going off of. The, the main descriptor of a narcissist describes more of the overt narcissist. It's that Donald Trump, it's that guy. It's that grandiosity. It's the preoccupation with the self or with beauty or with achievement. Um, it's flashy clothes, it's flashy cars. It's, you know, uh, very over the top, obvious, like look at me kind of a person. They don't see the covert narcissist for what they are because they're not trained to see that person because it's not in the DSM. It's not, it probably was not in what they covered in, in their training. So if you are going to a therapist and you're finding some of this, this terminology helpful in describing what you're going through, there's a tab on my website. I'll put a link down here below um, for words that you need to know. I highly recommend, you know, you can cut and paste those into a Word document. You can print out the whole thing. It's quite extensive of different terminology that you're using or that you're hearing that helps you to describe your experience. Give that to your therapist and say, and highlight what applies to you and say, this is what I'm going through and, and how and it'll help them to help you because this is, this terminology is probably not going to be familiar to them. So uh, some examples of covert narcissists would be Osama bin Laden, right? Um, if you were to look at the, the guy, he seems very meek, very quiet, very almost spiritual. Uh, interesting guy. I, you know, but here he is launching these terrorist attacks, killing millions of people, thousands, hundreds of thousands of people. The, Ferris Bueller, right? In the movie, here he is. He's very, you know, he's very grandiose, but he's very charming. He's very likable, but he doesn't care about other people, right? So that would be more of a, you know, obviously like a fake person that would be considered a covert narcissist. Um, other people that you can make the case for covert narcissism. I, I would even say, you know, Dr. Wayne Dyer, is that his name? Dwyer, Dyer. Um, he did the Your Erinus Your Zones was a big book in the 70s. I personally can't stand that guy. He makes my skin crawl. I think that he's a total narcissist and it's fascinating to watch people because he is so charming and he's so convincing and he really comes across as like this super spiritual man. But if you, if you kind of like learn about his past and his divorce and who he really is and all of this, it's, it just, I don't know. He just seems very narcissistic to me. Bill Cosby is another one, right? So very charming, very likable. Went to all these great lengths to build up this huge public image of him being the world's America's dad, right? This, this fantastic guy. And here he is drugging and raping women and doing God only knows what else. So they're very charming. They fly under the radar. They're hard to spot right away. The only way to really avoid covert narcissists is to know the red flags. I'll put a link down to my red flags to the narcissist series. Know the red flags take your time, give yourself a chance to see these red flags for what they are. It, it takes some, sometimes several weeks to really fully see them. And don't get caught up in the love bombing of it because it's really easy when you feel so good to justify to gloss over these red flags when you shouldn't. Because when if and when this relationship ends down the road, it's gonna be for all those red flags early on in the beginning, I guarantee you. So that's it for now. Again, my name is Dana and my website will be down below. My support group on Facebook will also be down below. 
NarcissistSupport.com and my group's also called Narcissist Support on Facebook. I will see you soon. Thanks.